Hi scholars, welcome back to another video. Today we're completing module one, lesson 10. As you may have noticed, we've skipped lesson nine because it's very similar to lesson 10 and I feel it's a little more confusing the way they go about solving it. So I thought we should just skip ahead to avoid the confusion. So let's start with our learning intention. Thoughtful mathematicians decompose units as a strategy to multiply. So just to refresh your memory, when I'm decomposing, let's say I was decomposing the number 10, I am breaking it apart into numbers that add up to that whole. So 10 could be decomposed to represent 4 and 6. And any other composition would work as well. For example, 3 and 7. So when you're decomposing, you're just breaking the number apart into smaller units that could also represent that larger unit. So let's go over our vocabulary. A factor are just the numbers that you're multiplying to get the answer. And that answer is called the product. So factor times the factor gives me the product. An array is just an arrangement of objects in equal rows. So here, both of these are arranged in three rows of five. This first one is using fruits. The second one is using boxes. But they both represent three rows of five or the, the expression three times five. The distributive property. So that is what we're going to be using in order to be able to decompose the problems we're solving today. So as you can see here, this box, they broke apart 4 times 7 to be 4 times 5 plus 2. So they decompose the 7 to be 5 and 2. Then they use that to be able to multiply easily. So if I don't know what 4 times 7 is, I can use 4 times 5 and 4 times 2 and add them up to get my product. I know 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 times 2 is 8. So I use those facts to help me figure out what 4 times 7 is. And I'll explain in more detail how we're going to do that. So let's look at one together. Well, watch me solve this one, I mean. So I want to decompose the units to solve the equation. I have 8 times 4. So I don't know what 8 times 4 is, but I can use smaller numbers that add up to 8 to help me figure out what 8 times 4 would be. So here I see they have five rows. So this would represent five times four. And this is three rows, so this would represent three times four. So I can use these facts to help me figure out what eight times four is. Well, I'm gonna skip count by fours just to double check, make sure that I'm right. I think it's 20, but I wanna be sure. Eight, 12, 16, and 20, so I was right. So 5 times 4 equals 20. And I already know that 3 times 4 is 12 just because I've heard that fact so many times on reflex. So now what I want to do is, if you notice down here, it says 5 times 4 plus 3 times 4. So I want to write in my products. So that would be 20 plus 12. So that means that 8 times 4 would be the same thing as adding 20 plus 12. I would get the same answer. So what does 20 plus 12 equal? Let me go ahead and add that using standard algorithm. 0 plus 2 is 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So that means that 8 times 4 equals 32. I can fill that up here as my final product. So to recap, what I did was, well, before starting the problem, the number was already decomposed for me. But I used the numbers they gave me, 5 and 3, to help me figure out what 8 times 4 would be. Because I multiply 5 times 4 first, then 3 times 4, because 5 and 3 equal 8. And then I add those two products to give me my final answer. So the reason I'm adding them is because separately, they do not equal 8 times 4. They're not enough. I have 3 times 4 and 5 times 4. When I combine them, that gives me 8 times 4. That's why I had to add the products. So let's try one together. Here we have 7 times 3. So here I see 5 groups, and here I see 2 groups. So I've got to solve this. What is 5 times 3, and what is 2 times 3? Well, 5 times 3 equals 15, and I already know that 2 times 3 is 6, because that's an easier fact, right? So what is the next thing we have to do 
in order to figure out what seven times three is. We need to add our products. I hope that's what you said. So I would add 15 plus six, and that means that 15 plus six will give me the answer to seven times three. So seven times three equals what? What is 15 plus six? What do I get when I add that? Well, I know that 15 plus five is 20, and I need one more. So if I add one more to 20, that would give me 21. So seven times three is 21. So let's try this last one on your own. So pause now, gather whatever materials you need to solve, and solve on your own, then press play when you're ready to check your work. Again, pause now, press play when you're ready to check your work. All right, so here we're solving six times three. They've already decomposed six for us to represent four and two, because four plus three equals six. So four times three, I already knew that that's 12. I told you earlier, right? That's a fact that I've already learned on reflex. And the same with two times three. So that really helps because these are easier facts than six times three. So the next thing I should have done was add 12 plus six, because that represents four times three plus two times three. And these combined would represent six times three. So 12 plus six gives me 18 when I add it. That means that six times three is 18. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please reach out to me on Schoology or Google Hangouts. Bye, everyone.